to resolve that situation. Another situation, a certificate of need with our health care uh, providers. Uh, my colleague, uh, Representative Spiegelman, and I are serving on a committee to look at that. Uh, the certificate of need to justify when a health care provider, a hospital, acute care can come into the community have to make the case to a separate board on whether they should be allowed to invest their own capital, take their own risk to, to expand health care services in the state. I think that exposes a situation where it's been uh, presented that uh, it's an impact on potential for hospitalizations, recovery, and just the overall health care in the state. Uh, a third piece uh, in regard to the reactionary versus responding is uh, with our long-term care facilities. Um, I'm deeply concerned that uh, how we're reporting, whether it's reporting or the actual cases that are over 65 percent of our deaths in the state are long-term care facilities, I think presents a tremendous issue where where has been some of the oversight regulation with these entities. Um, when it's all said and done, there's going to be plenty of opportunity to, uh, to, do the, to look back and see what worked and what didn't work. So that's one piece of what we're doing as uh, legislators and in, in working in the community. Down on the ground, uh, fortunately, I've had the uh, opportunity to have uh, individuals from Bay Health our own Judy from the chamber came in and uh, participated with my first live uh, Facebook town hall that we did, seems like two months ago, where we wanted to share and educate the community about what is going on at Bay Health in regard to their health care concerns. What is the chamber doing to proactively respond and make a plan that, hey, we're adults, we can put together our own best practices to provide a safe and secure business environment for our employees, for our vendors, and for our customers. Uh, we, we completed a second uh, uh, Facebook Live town hall where uh, at that time we brought in Dr. Kevin Fitzgerald from the CR School District trying to address the questions and concerns uh, from the individuals about uh, how is my son or daughter getting educated, what are we going to see, uh, and then also we had an individual with the hospitality industry where she expressed what the uh, hospitality industry, restaurants, bars, uh, hotels can be prepared to do early on. Uh, I know my colleagues and I have answered hundreds of questions from constituents about why this, why not that, and trying to be that voice uh, back to the executive branch where right, wrong, or indifferent, uh, they own this. They own this process that uh, ideally we can learn from it and also put together some uh, best practices, areas where we can do better for the next time. Thank you. Good morning, I'm Senator Dave Lawson. I represent the 15th Senatorial District, which is Western Kent County, from Clayton to Harrington, mostly farm area. We've been, Kent County has been pretty much COVID reduced as opposed to free, but nonetheless, it's the, the safest place to live in the, in the state right now. And as far as the question goes, I'll get right to it. Have we been involved? No. Matter of fact, we were locked out of our offices, the Senate, Senators were locked out of our offices for over 85 days. They absolutely uh, took away our, our key access, and we had no access to our offices. We could not work from there. And to say that we were involved in the process, we were locked out of the process. Now, that falls on Senator McBride, but it doesn't, and it comes down from the governor. But we couldn't even serve our constituency. That is a shame, let alone being involved in this decision making. Not at all. The governor has seen fit to only allow the Republican senators, the entire caucus, nine of us, one hour for questions and answers. That's it. No advice at all. We were not welcome at the table. And it's been really frustrating for our constituents, for our, our businesses to survive with this. We have questions, we run them up and we get answers. Uh, yeah, we get answers. But I, I can't say that they're uh, worth a lot. Uh, the big thing out in Western Kent County that we went after, we're trying to get the churches open. And uh, when I asked, suggested that to the governor, his comment was, are you gonna decide who lives or dies? Are you gonna decide who gets a ventilator? I'm sorry, what's that have to do with trying to get the churches back open? And there's churches throughout Kent County, 
And these people needed that solace. They needed to get back and get that spiritual guidance, that comfort. And he absolutely put his foot down and said, no, we're not doing that. And even to the point that Naomi's church was threatened to, uh, to be closed if, if they went ahead with their service. So to say we were not involved is an understatement. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, we'll move on to the second question. Um, do you have any insight as to when you think business will be able to operate in normal fashion here in Delaware? And we'll begin with uh, Representative Speaker. It's a good question. Um, as Senator Lawson said, uh, we we have no decision there. This, and as Representative Urich said, this is on the governor. The governor has absolute say in this. Um, and for one fed thing, that the situation should probably change. Uh, the Constitution wasn't designed around an extended state of emergency like this. Um, and so to have one person in charge of all decision making over this long of a period of time is contrary to the tenets of a republic. And so the, the question is, to, the answer is really, whenever the governor feels like it is when that'll happen. Now, to be fair, we have evolving situations. Over the last week, the CDC and the World Health Organization have released reports that said that non-symptomatic, uh, people who have non-symptomatic have difficulty spreading the disease. It's excellent news for getting everything back on track. Um, I think the most important thing though is if we have to shut down, if we have to, then we need a level of consistency that we have not had. Let me give you an example. Uh, if you are an ice cream parlor, for instance, Vanderwind ice cream, um, you, throughout this, for the longest period of time, you are not allowed to open because you are an ice cream parlor. But Friendly's, which is part of a huge restaurant conglomerate, could serve you ice cream curbside. They could even deliver. So Vanderwinds couldn't open because they are an ice cream parlor. But Friendly's, because they're a restaurant, can serve you ice cream. That level of consistency is not only maddening, especially to small business, but it is the biggest source of transfer of wealth in my lifetime from Main Street to Wall Street. And it is shocking to me that a Democratic Party that is consistently shouting for Main Street has crafted policies that benefit, benefit Wall Street more than any other policy I have seen in my lifetime. So when are businesses going to be back open? I don't know. I don't make that decision. And obviously, I don't, I've been told I'm not even allowed to have a voice in that on behalf of my constituents. But if we have to shut down again, we need a level of consistency that we have not had in the last three months. Thank you. Phase two doesn't even begin until Monday. And I don't know when phase three might come, but I would guess at least the end of the month. Currently, we don't even know what phase three entails. The administration has pulled some of the particulars of the, of the protocols off of their website as to what phase three involves. And so there's really no direction at this point what will phase three look like? And so that's very, very frustrating. But I will tell you, I would not be surprised if the governor keeps some level of restrictions on business until uh, there is wide availability uh, of a vaccine, which um, I, I don't think is going to come before sometime next year. So. I don't call that normal, but that's how I would answer the question. I believe it's uh, Adam Smith in The Invisible Hand that talks about how the market reacts. That's uh, individuals adjusting their decisions, their actions, their inactions. We can literally open up the economy, every store today. That doesn't guarantee that people are going to go back to the same lifestyle that they exhibited four months ago. People are going to be somewhat, a certain percentage, reluctant to go out. Ideally, if they are in the pocket of individuals that have had significant health complications from COVID-19, the elderly, underlying health conditions, I gotta believe they're not rushing right back out to go to a crowded market or a restaurant or maybe even a church. So there's been alternatives that have sprung up. Virtual church service, the curbside. So the market does react. 
call me simplistic, but I believe in the power of the individual. I believe that individuals can have self-governance, that they can make their own decisions. It doesn't replace government, but I'd rather have the decisions come from the ground up versus the top down. Now we could all have examples of both on the positive side and a little bit on the silly side. And one example just that we've seen is the standards to allow youth baseball and youth softball to be allowed in Delaware. I don't know who wrote these. If you haven't seen them, you just gotta take a step back and say, is this real? I mean, it sounds great on paper, but if you've ever played either of those sports or seen anybody who play those sports, you gotta look at this and say, come on, who came up with this? So again, let's let the people decide. We're not eradicating the need for government, but the solutions and the ideas outside of self-governance can come from the entities and be brought back up versus top down. Baseball. Apparently those people making that doctrine, coming out with that doctrine, have never even attended a game, let alone played. The inconsistency is, as Representative Spiegelman brought about and everybody else, has just been phenomenal. There is no consistency in what is coming down. One day it's this, one day masks are no good, now masks are good. And on and on and on. So understand trying to react to this, but at the same time, the damage that is being done because of the lack of consistency is unacceptable. Businesses need to get back up and operating. It's going to take a long time to rebuild that customer base. A long time. And the issue arises there that those making the decisions have never signed the front of the paycheck. They've always signed the back or direct deposit. They've never been out there having to make payroll. So they don't care. They're still getting their income. They've never invested their life savings into a business and see it fail because of government overreach. Do we know when government is going to get off the back, off the neck of business 